Okay, let's talk about one or two baits. <laughs> That's a joke to start with, it's more like 200. We've got bread in all its forms. Flake, paste, crust, and then we've got cheese, cheese paste, blue stilton, brie, anything, they love it. Worms, Peter Stone once caught one on a chip. Then we've got the usual baits, maggots, casties, pal of mine, Eric Barnes, he once had one on a bait and rind. But I've not got anything like that today, I've, I've no chips, I've got no baiting, I'm hoping for one or two fish. I've got the usuals, casties, maggots, hemp, bread, bit of cheese, should catch. I'm going to put, use the feeder first, get some bait in the swim. Before I do though, let's have a look at this rig I'm using. The rod, lovely flexible rod. It's what you want really, it's not, it's not a quiver tip rod, but uh, there's enough action there that you can use lines down to a couple of pound anywhere, no problem. It's a Shakespeare International Carbon Feeder. It suits me for all sorts of chub fishing, not just for feeder fishing. The real Sigma Graphite, again by Shakespeare. Skirted spool, not so many years ago we weren't using this type of reel, but uh, there's not very many of the other sort made now, they're nearly all skirted spool. The line I'm using, it's a three pound main line, and I'm on 2.6 bottom. Very simple rig, let's put the rod down. Drennan feeder, a small running bead and a link swivel so that I can simply take the feeder off and swap that for a bomb, no problem at all if I want to swap over. Plastic ledger stop, you can soon loosen it off, change the position if you want to use a, a longer hook length or a shorter hook length, no problem at all. And if the thing I don't like about ledges, these plastic ledger stops is if I'm fishing very heavy, they've got a tendency to slip. The force of the weight on there makes it slide down and that doesn't do your line very good at all. It's no good for it. So in a case like that, I would tie a little swivel in. The main line to one eye of the swivel and the hook length to the other eye of the swivel. Again, there's no problem because your ledge, the, the swivel then becomes your, your ledger stop. Hook, today, or to begin with anyway, let's put it like that. I, I may change later on, but to begin with, I'm using an 18s and I'm going to probably use a couple of casters on that. I'm going to feed maggot and caster, caster on the hook, keep the feed going down. One problem on this river, this particular stretch of river, is that you get quite heavy boat traffic. There's pleasure boats, cruise, cruiser types, all kinds, as well as commercial boats, and they up and down quite regularly. And they're causing a lot of disturbance on the bottom. There's like a wash. And no matter how careful you are and how accurate you are with your feed, it's spreading that feed around. So you've got to have constant feed, if only for that reason alone. I'll try white maggots first. I've got yellow maggots, but uh, I don't know what they want, but you've got to start somewhere, and white's as good as any. Now we get some feeding. This type of chub fishing is what I call pleasure chub fishing where you come along with your maggots and casters, fish are smallish so you can you can catch anything. Gudging. In this stretch you've got bleak where I normally fish down the Atchum area. You don't get them down there, there's loads of them here. It's perch, roach, could catch anything. I'm hoping for chub, obviously, but you just never know, and you've got to take things as they come. I may catch, oh, half an hour or more pulling gudgeon in, bleak. If I'm really unlucky, I won't get anything. But uh, the thing is, you've got to keep this feed going in. I'm not really bothered if I catch anything or not, as long as I keep the feed going in. For a, within reason. I mean, when I say I'd not bother if I don't catch anything, I mean, I'm not bothered if I don't catch anything for a, a while while the feed's going in. I'm interested in chub. 
not the the good in and the bleak. If they come along, I'll have to suffer them. And I mean that kindly, suffer them, because I like to catch what I've set out to catch. Even if I am, uh, pleasure fishing, where you, you're liable to catch anything. My favourite way of chub fishing is to go for a couple of hours in the evening with like a, a stalking set up. You can do this on the on the upland rivers. This river, the River Seven, up at the, in the Verney area and round there, Welshpool, Newtown. My own local little river, the Dane. It's a great river for stalking. All you need is your rod, your reel, landing net, a loaf, say, or a little tin with some cheese in, anything like that. And what you, oh, that was a little knock, probably a gudgeon. No. So keep this feed going in. Yeah, so minimum setup, in other words. No, the bait's not even sucked. When that happens, it's usually a small fish, and I didn't give it time to suck it enough to renew the bait. Anyhow, as I was saying, the stalking setup, minimum requirements, because you're going roving, you're going roving along the river, looking for the different swims, the ones I was telling you about with all the character, the rafts, creases in the swim, weed beds. Look for these features. One thing you can do as well, once you've walked along a river and you've spotted a few swims, you can mix a bit of mashed bread up and you can drop a little bit of this mashed bread in each swim as you walk along. Let's say you do half a dozen and you get to the top of the stretch. Get to the last swim and you put your mashed bread in and then walk back right to the beginning again at the first swim you baited and fish that one. It should have settled by then, you see, chub moving in. Because what you find sometimes, quite often actually, when you're on these uh, two hour evening sessions, and oh, by the way, an hour before dark and an hour or so into dark, that's the best time of all for chub. Right, you're back to the first swim. The chub have moved in on the mashed bread you've put in. You catch one. One thing about chub as well, if you don't get a bite within 10 minutes, move. I'm not talking about this kind of fishing because with feeder fishing, we try and attract fish into the swim. Not so much with that we know the fish are already there, but we're trying to attract them into it with the feeder. Anyway, with the roving style, the chub should be already there because you've picked out the good swims, you know the river. So in your first swim, give it 10 minutes. If you don't get a bite, move into your second swim. Give that 10 minutes. Because you can almost guarantee at that time of night, hot time for chub, you get one within 10 minutes. If you don't, move. Pack in, go somewhere else, find another swim. But on a good day, you can get a chub out of all those swims Probably not more than one, if you, hang on. Probably not more than one, because chub soon, ah, that's uh, got in the net, hang on, let's just free the, got to be careful here. Luckily it's only small, it should come out easy enough. That's we're losing my concentration. Vital with any kind of fishing. That's the thing with chub though, if, once you've taken one out of a swim on the kind of upland river I'm talking about, you've got to be very, very lucky to take another one within a reasonably short time. Because don't forget, you're only down there for a couple of hours in the evening, two or three hours anyway. So, uh, really, catch one fish and then move. Keep a good rhythm going. Obviously, you're going to cast a lot more often at this stage of the game because you're feeding the swim. You slow down the, the rate of feed as you start getting bites and you know how much they need. We'll see what we can do. I've had a couple of taps anyway, probably just gudging. But that last bite, just having a look at the maggots, just when I baited up again then, it wasn't sucked as much and it was a slightly harder knock than the other one. So. I've got a feeling there could be one or two moving. Oh, yeah. No, it's no chub. Oh, it's not gudging either. Ah, uh, perch. Little perch, that's all. 
I'll keep it going. Keep this bait going in. Here's the boats I was telling you about. Here's a long boat now. And a little cruiser behind. They're all sending the wash up the bank, taking the line of feed away. This is why we've got to keep things going. Keep the feed going in all the time. Get some bait back in quick. It's a nice boat. The dab chick. Little cruiser behind. The big barges they don't half make some swell come up on the bank. So I've got to be careful of these maggots here. They soon wash you over this box. And let's get this feed back in. Back to the same spot. The swell's not too bad now, so if it was really bad off a, a barge or anything, uh, I wouldn't bother to cast for a while because there's that much swell. It'd just wash all the feed out from the path and try and create. Yes, this is no gudging. Yes, it's a chub. It's a chub, all right. Come on. Yeah, come on, baby. Oh, it's gone across the river a bit from where I picked it up, away from the line. Probably a snag over there it's heading for. They know where all the snags are. Yeah, it's going a bit now. Yeah, come on, then. Come on. See a lovely soft top on this rod? You can use a light line and that lovely soft top there it takes all the shock absorber effect. Once you've, you've with chub, there's like a, a couple of minutes of hard battle and then they seem to give up at some stage. And then other chub, they, they'll fight all the way to the net. See, there's another snag on the left it's trying head for. Oh, it's doing well, this one is. Come on, come on. It's not very big, but it's a start. It just shows chub are moving in the swim. They are a shoal fish, so there'll be more where that came from. Come on, then. That's a good one. Chub. Another name for chubs, Chavindy. That's an old English name, but nobody calls them that now. They're just called chub. What a beautiful fish. Here's one thing to notice. On the anal fin, it's concave. On the anal fin of a dace, it's convex. And dace look very, very much like chub in the smaller sizes. And that's the way you can identify which species you've caught. Convex on the chub, concave on the dace. And you can't go wrong then. Let's have him in the net. Get some more feed in. It's obviously doing a lot of good. It's a chub, but it's a oh, it's a better one. This one. This is what we come for. This is a real chub. Come on, it's gone upstream. It's going upstream. This one is. It's always a sign of a bigger fish when they start moving upstream. Come on then. Going well, this one. Yeah. Keep the rod up. Come on, then. Come on. Oh, let's go. Come on. Yeah. Oh, that feed's definitely paid off anyway. This is the a good sign there. Definitely. Come on. Come on. Keep the rod high, you soon tire them out. Let them bounce around on that rod tip. Let the rod do its job, the shock absorber effect. Oh yeah, oh yeah, nice fish. What a beautiful chub. Oh yeah, what a cracky. What a cracky. Worth catching any day of the week. What a belting fish. What a beautiful fish. 
beautiful bit of weed around him. I think fair and square on the top lip. Oh yeah, there's no way that one was going to get off. No way. Yeah. How about that then? Hey, brilliant. Tremendous stuff. So you can get another one like that. What a cracky. Pop him in the net. Oh yeah, great. Go on, baby. Tremendous. Right, let's see what we can. Tell you what I'll do now. I'm going to go on my favourite method for river fishing. I absolutely love stick float and trotting down. Okay, I may I may do better on the ledger by sticking on that on the feeder. It looks like we've got a shoal of chub in and we've got that line of feed going down and they're there. But so I, I love float fishing. Let's go for it. That's an original stick float. Divided by Benny Ashist and he, had, he used it in the first place for catching roach on the Macclesfield Canal, I believe it was. There's definitely canals anyway. For casting to the rushes on the far bank using casters, which before that time were called chrysalis. It's only since that day casters have actually been called casters and not chrysalis. Balsa, which is very buoyant. Cane, which is dense and will sink. And the idea behind it was that you balanced the balsa and the cane to give you exactly what you wanted in the amount of shot you used down the line. The more balsa you used, the more buoyant the float would be and the more stable it would be. Plenty of cane down, the, down at the bottom end and the, the fewer shot you need, and the more self-cocking the float became. More boat traffic going past. Gonna have a few more waves again in a minute. Anyway, that was the idea behind the stick float, and an excellent idea it was. And it was taken up later for trotting on rivers. Not too far out because you lost control then, but caster fishing on rivers with a stick float, it became the universal method. This is a Drennan one. Again, balsa, but plastic. Now then, the very latest thing. Again made by Drennan and Dick Clegg. And this is called a stable stick. We've got balsa, and we've got plastic. But the difference with this one is that we've got this bulge of plastic at the bottom. And that makes that float more stable. All stick floats cast accurately, but this one especially so. And it'll cast further. So you would use this in deeper water, naturally in deeper water, because you're casting further, and that's almost certain that's where the deeper water will be in the centre channel and you've got much more control over your stick float with a stable stick than any other one in those sort of conditions. This is a big one coming up for barge. Oh, it's a pleasure boat, this one. Anyway, normally when stick float fishing, or even waggler, I would spend at least 10 minutes firing bait in before I even fished to establish the swim. What it does, when I, when I say establish, I mean that it's giving the fish confidence. You can fire bait in the swim and get the fish feeding, and during that period, you, won't be, you don't want to be catching any fish. You want to make the fish think that they're safe and secure. Nothing's happening to them. There's bait going in the swim. They're picking the bait up, they're feeding. There's no members of the shoal disappearing, which will be happening we hope, when we start fishing. So that 5, 10, 15 minutes, with however long you want to go, is always well worth it before you actually start fishing, to establish the fish's confidence, make them feel safe and secure. Then when you do start fishing, it'll make all the difference in the world because you'll be able to catch quite a few fish before they become spooked. Anyway, let's get some bait in. We'll have a few trots down, we'll see what's happening. I'm going to use Casty. I'll put a couple of good pouch falls in. Again, remember to keep the bait going down the same spot, keep the same line of feed. Let's put the bait up here 
and a catapult and an handy reach because we got a good feeding rhythm going now so we want everything to hand nice and handy. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, sit you up, sit you up, go on. Oh, it's going upstream. I don't pull at it, not with the 1.7 and a 20, it's got to let it go. Backwind, that's the best way of playing a fish when you're on light lines. Backwind, never mind the, the drag. You can tighten that right up, it doesn't make any difference. When the fish wants to go, just backwind and let it go like that. No, it's not particularly a big fish. It's coming in pretty easy, this one. Come on, baby. Yes, come on, they're like a submarine coming up. A small sub, yeah, but still. Yep, yeah. here we go. That big mouth come out of the water. Beautiful. Ugh, great. That's it, get on there. Oh, that's not a bad fish. Oh, yeah. Well worth catching on stick float because they are good ones on that kind of tackle. One like that. Oh, smashing. Beautiful. Very nice. Very pleased with that on stick float. 20 zoot, 1.7 line. As long as you've got a good rod, nice supple top. That makes all the difference. In you go. Let's get back in, get another one. Get some feed in first. Keep that feed going in and keep the shoal. I put a couple of pouchfuls in this time. That's it. They love casters. Love casters. Sometimes these lines are harder to catch than the bloody fish, yeah. Cast it. That's it. I haven't had to bury the caster, by the way. Started catching now, just looking through the top. So there's no need for that. Flick. And we're in. Nice trot down. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Next trot down. God, we must have a good shoal in now. Those casters are doing a lot of good. We've got to watch that snag. Yeah, come on. Steady. Nice and steady. Let the rod do the work. Come on, man. Come on. Boats come in as well. I don't want to. Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh. Steady on. Oh. Get the boil on the water then. Oh, it's going a fair bit this one. They can fight sometimes, these chub. I mean, sometimes they come in like a wet sack. But not very often. It's, uh, they're good scrappers, all in all. Especially when you're fishing near snags, you can't afford to take chances with them. Cut, cut. Oof. 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 Come on, baby. Oh, he's trying to head out to deeper water again. No, no, he's turned. Come on, come on, behave yourself. No, he's trying to head for that snag. Be very, very careful. A 20 is it's very fine wired. You've... Keep that rod straight, though, and you're okay. You don't want to wear a bigger hole in the lip by keep one side and then the other. Just keep it up like that, nice and steady. Let the rod do the work. Just let it pump on the end. Come on, then. Come on, me beauty. Come on, then. never mind that boat, he won't help you. Come on, then. Come on then. Yes, look at that mouth. You wouldn't think a big mouth like that, what a little caster that I give it. 
still, I reckon they get enough on them, they are happy. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a lovely fjord, oh, what a spanky. What a spanky. Look at that. What a cracking fish. Oh, really nice. In, in the scissors this time. You're really going for these casters. What a cracky fish. Let's have it in the net. Beautiful. Let's have another one. Let's get some bait in. Keep that bait going in. Be one pouch full. They seem to be well on the feed now, but we don't want to overfeed them. Put a bait on. Through the end again. Got to wash off these boats. God, no wonder the banks are getting eroded. See when there's any bank left sometime, they keep this up. Technical hitch. You've noticed I've waded in the water. It's much easier than you clear the trees around you, and if, as long as you're careful, it doesn't make any difference. Seems it's strange, really, that you can go on some rivers and you've got to creep around, and you can still spook the fish. It seems like here on most rivers where there's match fishing. You can wade in and do what you want, more or less, and they seem to be used to it. They don't bother. Probably the boats get them used to disturbance as well. Let's put a bit more bait in. Fresh caster on. Yes, <laughs> just when you least expect it. <laughs> I don't know. Fish is full of surprises. Another good fish as well. Be steady with this one. I usually end a day's fishing with one last cast. I usually have about 12 last casts. I go, oh, my wife says to me, where have you been? You're late again. I said, well, I've had a, a last cast. How many last casts have you had? Well, I'll make this my last cast, even though I've got a fish, because you can't be ending fishing on a high note, can you? Beautiful fish like this. What a cra oh, what a crack! It's a good one as well. Oh yeah. yeah come on then. We can no, no, he's not ready yet. He's not ready. Oh. Yeah, look at that. What a beaut. It's full of it. This one is. Really got aggravated. Come on then. You're at it now. Ready for home. Oh yeah. Great. What a great fish. Oh, it's a really nice chub. What a lovely sample of a chub. Look at that. What a cracker. Well, he was a lovely fit fish. What a lovely specimen, lovely deep body, beautiful head, nice fins, great fish.
keep him out of the mud. Yeah. Yes, a nice fish. Typical show bream. Yeah, it's about three pounds, which uh, Daventry Reservoir is noted for this size of bream. There must be more than one show because I'm told there's fish in here up to about seven pounds and you never catch bream varying that much in size. You can have them three pounds in one show and seven pounds in another, but very, very rarely do you catch bream of those two far different sizes in the same session or there'll be a long, long time between catching fish of this size and fish of about seven pounds. Let's have him in the net. There you go. Let's catch another one. Homemade rod pod this is. Uh, a bloke named Dave Sharp made it. All it is is four tubes welded together half inch inside bore and wing nuts and the beauty of this type of rod pod is that it uses ordinary rod rest you don't need anything special it's really handy to carry about you can have a, a little pack and it fits in your tackle box and there's no problem whatsoever and it's handy then for if you're on rocky ground a very muddy ground like this and it's infinitely adjustable Use the one rod rest here, which you can have the the actual rod pod as, as far apart as you like, depending where your your rings on the rod are situated. And uh, it, it's it's really handy, much better than any commercial ones I've seen. I'm using bite alarms, and the reason for this is that I wanted to observe the water. Not such a setup isn't necessary. You're much better with a quiver tip or a float. But this allows me to sit back and relax and pick my binoculars up. I can scan the water, looking for bream rolling, and have a look at the wildlife. I can I can really enjoy myself, and that's what fishing's all about, isn't it? So there I am, sat back. I can look anywhere I like. Don't even have to look at the rods at all, and I'll know the instant I get a bite. Butt indicators, again, homemade. It's just an aluminium rod. This is actually uh, aquarium stuff here, uh, the, the transparent tube with a beetle light in for night fishing. This is a sliding weight here, in case there's a lot of undertow, a lot of drift. This is another sliding weight here, uh, slightly heavier, which I can slide down right to this end and keep, keep it weighted down if there's a hell of a lot of drift. The very fast to use, uh, Unlike ordinary bobbins which fly all over the place, they tangle around, this is uh, always in, in the right position to use, much like a quiver tip or a swing tip, always there ready for action. And sometimes with bream, you've got to be ready all the time to keep casting in fast, because once you've got a shoal of bream in the swim, you've got to make the most of it. It's no use buggering about having a flask of tea before you cast in, the, the shoal can be gone, you've got to keep casting, keep feeding, keep that shoal there in the swim. Right, let's get casting. Let's catch some more fish. Casters, ground bait, all good stuff. Could eat it myself. Here's a good point for you. Directly opposite to me, I picked out, it's like a white marker. And that's a, a really good guide for me. It's a good target for me to aim for every time to ensure me bait always lands in the same spot. Now if it was night fishing, what I would do is look at the line of trees and look at the shape of the silhouettes. And I'd pick out a silhouette that I could use as a target in the dark because no matter how dark it becomes, you can always see silhouettes on the far bank. I'm fishing about 30 yards out. That's it. Smack on the marker. Sink the line. I 
I'll put this on the right hand rod rest. Put the indicator on. Switch the alarm on. That's set up. Ready for fish. Let's get the other one in. One. Two. Both worms hooked in the head. So plenty of wriggle still in them. I'm getting lime bites now. That's two or three times that's gone off. It's a good sign that is because it means there's a good shoal of fish just moved into the swim. And what are they doing? They're milling round in the swim back and to and they're picking up the line on the dorsal fin and that's what's giving these line bites now. Uh, line bites again. Should be in before long again. That's it. It's about two yards that is from the the other rod, which is just about right, because you don't want to be baiting too big of area. That one's set up. Sank the line, put the indicator on. Switch on. That's great, that is. Oh yeah. Another fair fish. Again, probably three or four pound. It feels about the same anyway. It's kiting over to the left. Typical bream. Come on then. Come on, be beauty. Come on. Come and have a look at these Canada geese over there. Seagulls flying over. Enjoy it with me. Get your head up and have a look. That's it. Come on then. Come on. Come on. There must be a load of fish in this swim now. I think I'll go on the quiver tip. After. I uh, think it's played out on the bite alarms now. We just don't need them. And get on the quiver tip and probably cast a lot more fish even though she'll only be using one rod instead of two. Should be a lot more action on the quiver. Oh yeah. Another nice fish. Again, it's about, about three pound this one. Yeah, look fairly in the scissors. Comes out nicely, whisker barb hook, no problems there. It's a shame really, but these fish haven't long since spawned and this is why they're looking a little bit worse for wear because uh, the spawning ritual, it doesn't half take it out of them. Very thin, this fish would probably weigh at least another eight ounces, if not a pound in another month or so when it's recovered. There you are, my beauty, get in. Let's have a go on the quiver. What a bloody lovely day today. It's not very often you can catch bream in conditions like this. Let's let some do this. That's the trouble with quiver tips, they flap around all over the place, especially when you've got a good wind on like this. You can't have everything, a good wind on a bream water is the best conditions you can hope for. I think it was Benny Ashes who said, a good wind blows the bait into a bream's mouth. And I think he's right. That's it, tighten up to the bait. What you need is a little bit of bend in the quiver tip, not too much, because you don't want to take the, the action out of the quiver tip. You want a little bit of bend, but not, not straight either, because you want to see drop back bites as well. Anyway, let's see what happens. You notice I'm not using a target board. That's because I'm lined up on a stone, so I don't really need one. Oh, that's a nice bite. Yes. That was Betty. Having a lot of taps, but that was quite a good bite, that one was. Yeah, another bream, three or four pound by the feel of it. It's kiting over to the right. My, it feels different somehow. It's a hell of a big roach. If it's a roach, you know that much. I'm pretty sure it's not a bream. I'll have to be careful with this one. Come on. Come on, 
Come on, get your head up. That's no bream. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a roach, it's about three pound. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on, get your head up. Oh. Oh, it's a crucian carp. It's a crucian good one as well. What's that doing amongst the shoal of bream? Usually bream push everything else out of the swim. They won't allow anything else to feed with them. It's unusual that is. Still a very welcome. It's a lovely fish. Oh yeah, what a beautiful fish. Whoa, what a cracky. Look at that. What a really lovely fish. Beautiful. Lovely fins and everything here. Oh, that's great, that is. Well, there's any more of those out there, I doubt it. Let's have him in the net. Oh, that's tremendous, that. Right. In you go. Definitely not another crucian carp. Come on. Ooh, come on. Surprising some bream, they can get their heads down and bore off just like tench. Others, the, as soon as you get that lift their head up, they, they, they just give up, it's a waste of time. This is going pretty well. It's a good one there, school. Come on. Come on. Here she comes, here she comes, like a bronze submarine cleaving the water. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful sight. What a lovely sight, that sun there, gorgeous. Come on then, come on baby, come on, come on, don't turn around, you're not supposed to do that. You know, everybody thinks that bream give up, we've not met you before, have they? Come on then, come on. Oh yes. It's a bit better this one. Nice fish. Yes, better condition than the others. It looks as though it spawned a bit earlier than the others and it's recovered faster. Oh yeah, much better fish. Yeah, let's give him a bit of a swell off. And you can have a look at him. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful fish. Lovely fish. Smashing. In you go. Tremendous. Let's have another one. Get back in quick. Sink the line. Now this is the speed of the quiver tip. This is what it's good for. As soon as it gets bottom it's ready. Oh! Yes, we're in again. We're in again. Come on, then. Now, you'll notice how I'm playing this fish. A lot of anglers make the mistake, they think they said, oh, I've got to put side strain on like this and side strain on like that. You're doing one thing when you're doing that, and that's making a bigger hole in the fish's lip. Because, since so today, I'm only using a 20 hook, very, very fine wired. If you're doing that all the time, all you're doing is working the hook round and making a bigger hole. The other thing is, keep, keep the rod straight up. Just keep it straight like that. Wind the rod down to the fish. Let the rod do the work. That's what it's all about. Why should you do it when you've got a rod and a reel do it for you? Wind down to the fish, pull. Wind down to the fish, pull. Simple. Keep it simple. Once the bream's got its head up like that, it's beaten. It's finished. And that applies to whether you're using light lines, heavy lines. That's the way to play a fish. Go on, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think it's a little bit better, this one. Yeah. I don't like all this mud at all. Yeah. For the fish's sake, anyway. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but slightly lighter colour. That's another thing about bream. 
You can get dark ones and light ones, bronze ones, silver ones. I don't mean the true silver bream species. They're just young bronze bream. That's it. Lovely fish. Away you go. Yellow maggots again, we're doing well on those today. Technical hitch. Happens to all of us. It's only a micro barb hook, but if you're careful, you can get them out without any problem, really. That's it, we wait. Ready for back in for another one. Net back. Yellow maggots again. I'll have another one out. Doing well on these yellow maggots today. No problem. Usually worm, most water. In fact, I started catching on worm, as you remember earlier. But uh, they've gone on to these yellow maggots and we haven't gone wrong since. I'm in too big here, get out there. I can't wait to catch him. I love these buggies. Right, come on then. Let's have another. Come on then. Yes, I can't believe this. It's a fishy chuck now. What a tremendous credit this water is. Ten years ago, it was a, f a feeder for the canals until the council took over. Now look at it. It's been landscaped over there. Brilliant water. Brilliant. I've not had fishing like this since I was in Ireland earlier this year. Great stuff. Oh yeah. Come on. Yes, here we are. Oh, a bit smaller this one. Yeah, recently spawned, I can tell straight away, it's got the spawning marks on it. They're always a bit lethargic when they've only just spawned. They haven't got half the fight of bream when they fit. When these have been back on the circuit a while, back on the patrol routes for a few more weeks, getting well fed. Obviously this is why they're feeding so hard now as much as anything, because they've only recently spawned, they're quite empty, they're hungry, which is good for me, yeah great stuff but uh, they'll be a few ounces heavier in a week or two and in much better condition nice loop and top lip so what I mean little little bit tatty from spawning that is shame but still they're certainly hungry enough there's no doubt about that Look at the big anal fin, big anal fin there. That's to keep the fish on an even keel, big, big dorsal fin, big anal fin. You need that when you've got a deep body like that. It'd fall over otherwise. In you go. Get back out there quick as we can. We're queuing up for it. Right, yellow maggots on again. There's two. Two. Let's get back in for them. There's loads of fish here. Point of the butt at the marker. Straight cast. Exactly the same spot. I don't know if you've noticed, but look at how the wind's pushed up now. It's really hammering into this bank. It's this unique shape, I'm told, of the reservoir when you get a southerly wind on. It causes all sorts of strange effects in the trees and so on. It's good for me because it's pushing the wind into this bank and there's nothing better for bream fishing. It's tremendous, there. 
Right, come on then, let's have another. Well, I've had a great day's fishing. I'm going to catch one more before I go home. Let's see what we've learned today. First of all, observation. You've got to find out where the fish are. You can do that easily with bream because they, they're very obliging in that on most waters they roll. A visit early morning or late evening is the best time to see them roll. Pinpoint the swims, get your bait in there. Baits, take plenty of bait with you. Go with the intention of catching a lot of fish. It's much better to take bait home than have pack in early because you've run out. The best baits are casters, maggots, particularly red worms. Best methods, swim feeder. Accurate casting with swim feeder. If you don't want to use swim feeder, you want to use catapult, you've got to be accurate firing your bait in with a catapult. Aye up, here's my last fish. Yes, come on then, what a way to finish your day's fishing like I've had today. Yeah, oh, this is a good four pounder, if not bigger. Yeah. I must have had several under, hundred pounds of bream out there today at one time. And a shoal like that, you can't keep in the swim with a pint of maggots and half a pint of casters. You've got to feed them, you've got to keep that feed going in all the time. Of the better of two evils, if you like, I think it's better to slightly overfeed with shoals of bream like this, risk overfeeding them, rather than not put enough and lose the shoal. Oh, that's a lovely fish, that is. What a way to end the day. What a belting fish. Oh, what a cracker. Beautiful. It's a great way to end the day. Let's pop him in the net and we'll see what we've caught. Magic. There you go. Oh, fantastic. Let's have a look what we've had. 